Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time is one of the best Christmas songs, and let's fight about it. All right. Good morning, it's Friday Reads. This is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. It is before dawn. The sun's not up yet, so I am at the mercy of the lights in this office. This is what the setup is this morning, and let's get started. My This is a recent Reads, a Friday Reads telling you what I've recently finished, what I am reading now, and what I may read very soon. Uh, it's probably my last video before the holidays. We're going on vacation very soon and uh, not planning on making any videos while I'm there. All right. First, before I get started on talking about reading, um, a couple of people ask have asked me about these books here. This is all my children's books bookshelf. Um, books that my kids had and some books that I had and some books that Chris, my husband, had too. So um, these are the Junior Classics. It's a whole series um, from Collier and the, um, Popular Illustrated. This is, I love this because there are color illustrations all the way through. Um, it was published in the copyright of this particular printing is 1959, but the original copyright right is 1938. And there are stories of wonder and magic, myths and legends, hero tales, fairy tales and fables, stories that never grow old, stories about boys and girls, the animal book, this is stories from history, sport and adventure, and poetry. So I... I, they're gorgeous. I mean, I have not spent any time reading them, really, but they're just, there's like color all the way through, usually one color prints it through the book. Um, but anyway, that's what these are, and they're just gorgeous, so. All right, that's that. All right, books I have recently finished. The first one I recently read is A Trick of the Light, number seven in the Armand Gamache series of the Louise Penny books. Um, I bought number seven and number eight intending to read them on vacation and then one day I was just kind of looking at a pile of books and that was on top. I was like, well, maybe I'll just read the first chapter and see how great it's gonna be when I go on vacation. And before you knew it, I had finished it. So. Um, I, I love these books. They are a lot of fun to read. They're dark and the progression of the story arc from book to book just kind of keeps you going. And um, I feel like the character development for the people in the town of Three Pines gets more intense each time. So I'm also going to read number eight while I'm on vacation and I'm not going to read it before we go. Um, another mystery or a detective, like, do you call him detective? It's a pr police procedural, um, Dark Sacred Night. It's a Renee Ballard slash Harry Bosch, uh, combination of the great minds of these two detectives together by Michael Connolly. Uh, I had read a couple of years ago, I read the first Renee Ballard in the series and I really liked the character he developed. Um, uh, she's a hard edged very smart police person, police woman, police. She's really smart and um, she's got a troubled past because um, there was a Me Too incident with um, someone who was above her and when she turned this person in, um, they kicked her out of this elite squad of police officers to the late shift. And so that's the premise of these books is that she works all night solving cases and then she sleeps during the day in a tent by the ocean and has sex with the lifeguard periodically just to keep things interesting. And um, the first one was really intense. She gets, you know, there's a lot of scary stuff that happens and I really like that. And then in this book, she gets together with Harry Bosch by a series of uh, circumstance and they solve a crime together. So the, th the third book with those two together is coming out or is out now. So that's on my list too. But if you haven't read this series before, you might like it. Um, for Nonfiction November, I did finish A Year in the Life of Shakespeare, 1599. And I'm so glad I did read it. I'm so glad that um, I, it put a lot of things into context. It taught me a lot of things I didn't know about how plays 
uh, were produced and why they were produced and how because of the schism between Catholicism and Protestantism and all the fighting from all of the royal families uh, that they knocked out all of the stained glass windows um, in churches because they were too, you know, sacrilegious, I guess, uh, and strayed from the Protestant side of things. I'm not explaining this well, but anyway, all of the things that people used to look at for their rituals in Catholicism were kind of supplanted. Uh, this is the hypothesis of the author by the theater. So, I mean, it did, I learned a lot about Shakespeare, about Elizabeth I, and then that led me to want to read more about Elizabeth I. So I'm reading a biography of her by Alison Weir right now. And it just kind of enriches your understanding of things when you learn new things. This is an obvious point, but uh, this it was a great book. So I recommend it if you're looking for something nonfiction to read about literature. I did a buddy read with Marian Ryan and we read Honored Guest by Joy Williams, who is a short story writer. Um, she writes very complicated and not clear clearly defined short stories about a lot of times very um, morally ambiguous people. Not always, but uh, there's a lot of moral conflicts. Um, there's a lot of moral conflicts, there's a lot of symbolism, and there's a lot of um, complexity that's under the surface that you just have to kind of intuit for yourself as you're reading the story. So. If you go into these, you have to realize that they're kind of each one's its own unsolvable mystery, but you're supposed to get an effect from reading the prose and it's supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to jar something inside of you that's um, appealing to your ethics, appealing to your sense of humanity, and just maybe trying to empathize with these some of these characters who are hard to empathize with. Um, I don't know what Marion would say about the stories, but we both came to the conclusion, I think, that we were glad we read them. Um, you wouldn't want a steady diet of Joy Williams, but she's definitely a mind that is like no one else. Her mind and her stories are, you can't imitate them. They are just their own thing and worth reading. Uh, just, they're definitely worth reading. I really enjoyed talking with Marion about each of the stories, even though we couldn't really come to conclusions sometimes about what exactly was going on or what the subtext of the stories were. And I wanted just to say that I did finish Duck's Middlebury Port quite a while ago now, and I haven't talked about it because I um, just wanted to wait to see other people, how other people felt about it, but I'm so glad I read it. I was very involved in it as I was reading it. The longer you get into this very long book, the more, um, uh, the longer you read this book, the more invested you become in the mind of the character. And then there are plot points that do happen and you see them start coming and something does happen. It's not just all stream of consciousness. There are also interludes that do break it up a little bit um, and take you, pull you out of the mind and into um, a situation with an animal. And you'll see that very early on that you follow the trajectory of this animal through its life. Uh, really interesting, a very anxiety provoking book, probably because we're all feeling a bit anxious right now. And it's also a very ethical and moral book about what the hell we're doing in this world with the environment, with politics, with um, inequality, um, with our healthcare system, how broken it is and how we can, uh, you can be so affected by a, a diagnosis that is expensive and you have to be scrambling for ways to pay your bills. And it's, so there's a lot to it. And um, I'm very glad that it's gotten a lot of attention. I think it probably should, win, should have won more awards. Um, I want to read more Lucy Ellman work. And 
I did read an interview where she said she hopes this book scares the hell out of us and it did and it does and uh, I'm glad I read it. I'm currently reading Cousin Pons by Balzac. I'm doing that as a group read with a bunch of people head up, headed up by Brian from Bookish and we're doing Voxer. We haven't started yet. We're in the initial phase of reading the first chunk and we're going to read it over a period of about I think two and a half weeks or three weeks or something like that over the month of December. Um, I've read the first four chapters. I think it's kind of delightful, um, very funny I think and kind of satirical making fun of a lot of the society in France in the 18... I want to say the 1840s. I'll catch you up on that date later if it's wrong. I'm also halfway through Rachel Cusk's Coventry essay, essays. It's called Coventry. I'm enjoying that. Um, she's made me, she makes you look at the world through her point of view and I like that. And even the controversial marriage essay I liked a lot and I'm, I think she should stand by it and I stand by it too. The second section that I'm in right now is more like art criticism um, through the lens of feminism. So probably not as engaging in this section as the first section, but I will keep reading this book. As I said before, I'm reading The Life of Elizabeth I by Alison Weir. There's a lot of details in this, maybe like a little bit too many details, just the constant back and forth about who or when or if she should ever get married and all of her little games that she plays with all these people to keep them on their toes and um, so I'll be glad when we get her to middle age and they quit asking her if she's going to get married. Um, I've read the first short the first short story and best American short stories of 2019 uh, edited by Anthony Mara. No edited by Anthony Doerr and the first story was really chilling and made you feel kind of weird but it was very good and I will talk more about that when I actually get through it. And then I just want to talk a little bit about what I might read while I'm on vacation aside from the Louise Penny book. Um, I do want to read All This Could Be Yours by Jane, Jamie Attenberg. I've read several of her other novels. I like her. I like her personality and I like her writing so anxious to read that and I have never read a book by Denise Minna but I keep seeing her name crop up for great um, detective stories or mysteries thrillers and the one that came out last year um, was called Conviction and um, I think it's about cyber identity theft uh, in crime and it's supposed to be really good so I have that book and I do have Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. So I have quite a few things uh, kind of on my Kindle and I'll take a couple of paper books just in case, uh, you know, the infrastru infrastructure of the world goes down while we're out of town. Um, I can still read on paper. So that's what's going on with me. Um, I just wanted to say hi, check up with you and let you know that I have been very engaged in reading. I'm watching a lot of Vlogmas videos, a lot of videos in general. Uh, I posited on Twitter that I think I just want to leave a little emoji for you if I watched your video and I, I don't feel like I have anything like intelligent to say yet I was glad I watched so if you just see an emoji from me on your video know it was in the right spirit um, that I just wanted to say I was there and um, I'm just trying to watch a lot of videos because it's really fun to watch them but it's um, kind of daunting at the number of videos that pop up on your feed during this um, period of time. So uh, happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas. And I will be back when I get back from my trip. And um, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.